In this tutorial, I will show step by step how steady state and isotropy image can be analyzed with SymphoTime 64. And in order to run the script, it's necessary that during the acquisition, we have used linearly polarized light as excitation source and that the fluorescence light we have split it using a polarizing beam splitter into two detectors. So one detector gets the light, which is para parallel polarized with respect to the excitation and the other one is perpendicular polarized with respect to the excitation. And as an example of analysis, I will take Psi-5 single molecules immobilized in a surface. So the first thing to do is to open the workspace where we have stored the data, highlight it, and go to analysis, imaging, and then go to anisotropy image. When we open the, um, the window, we will see that we've got different regions. At the left, we've got the analysis options. In the center, we've got an intensity image. In green, we've got the perpendicular detector. In red, we've got the parallel detector. At the right, we've got already the anisotropy image calculated. And at the bottom, we've got the histogram of the anisotropy across the image. But this anisotropy image can be calculated with a little bit more accuracy. For, for this, we can do we can apply binning, so we have so we gather more more photons per pixel. And we can also tell to the detect to the software which detector is which. So in this case, the detector two is the parallel, and the detector one would be the perpendicular. You can also set a threshold. So in this case, all the pixels suddenly less than twenty five photons will not be considered. Into the, into the analysis. And if we want to see roughly which is our background, we can go to right click and then go, go to show data reader and we will scroll through the image, we see how many counts we've got per pixel. We've got around 10 counts in the dark images, so 25, it's okay. So we can go to calculate the anisotropy and the new anisotropy image is calculated. So now if we click help, we can see the equations. And we see that in the equations we've got from the general formula of the anisotropy, we also have some correction factors like the G factor and the L factors that can be introduced if we click more. So in our case, I know that the G factor is 0 0.8. This accounts for the different sensitivities of the two detectors. So we'll introduce 0 0.8 and I will recalculate the anisotropy image once more. And to visualize the data a little bit better, I can click here and then maybe saturate the image at 100 photons. And now here we will be able to see very clearly the green detector, the red detector, and then also some, some yellow pixels. This means that this light getting to both the detectors. And of course, this has to be also noticeable in the anisotropy, in the anisotropy image, which is this display by default in a rainbow scale from minus 0 0.4 to 1, which is the theoretical maximum values for single molecules or for for align fully aligned molecules in a surface. So we can save the data, and when we save and reopen it, the data should be stored. 